Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been struggling for many years with my internet connection here. I have Comcast service, I've got no other choices, even my LTE 4G network nearby is Verizon only, and my tower can maybe get me about a megabit per second in both directions. Not very good. Now my cable connection might sound good on the surface. It's 300 down and about 10 to 12 up. But the problem is, is that I upload gigabytes of videos every day, and it takes a lot of time to get those videos uploaded to the various platforms that we send things to. And additionally, the reliability of my upstream connection here has never been good. If you ever watch one of my live streams, we very frequently have interruptions because the connection just can't stay stable enough for even a very low bit rate live stream. Now I've been complaining to Comcast for years and now they're sick of hearing from me. They are going to be hooking up Gigabit Pro service here for me in the very near future. This is not a freebie, I'm paying full rate for it. Uh, but what it's going to do is give me uh, two gigabits per second, both down and up, which is a substantial speed upgrade. And it's also a direct fiber to the premises product. This is available across many Comcast markets. You might want to look into it if you are struggling with bandwidth. It's about $300 a month, so very pricey. But where I am, they're the only game in town, and this is the only way that I could affordably address some of the issues I'm having here, getting my channel to function efficiently. So I'm very excited to get this in here, and I am willing to pay the price for it because I have no other choices and probably never will. So hopefully it'll all come together. But when you've got two gigabits, you've got to think about your home network environment because most of the time uh, our ethernet is gigabit or less. And in my home, I've got gigabit all over the place, but I can't support the full speed of this internet connection with my current stuff. So in the first couple of episodes of this series, we're going to be looking at the upgrades we're making within the internal network to be ready for the service when it arrives. And then we'll of course talk about the service when it does get here, whenever that is. Uh, given the current pandemic we're under. Now the router we're going to use for this project is the Unify Dream Machine Pro, otherwise known as the UDM Pro. And I have been using Unify products now for many, many years. I'm a very happy customer. Uh, when I was at my old job, we wired up our entire facility with their access points and other networking equipment. It is super affordable, but has enterprise class features. And now with these Dream Machine routers, they are consolidating a lot of different products into one. Now the router that this is replacing is a regular Dream Machine from Unify. It's a little cylinder device that they sent to us free of charge and full disclosure last year. It's a great router. There's nothing wrong with it. It can handle all of the network configuration in my house as well but it can only handle about 850 megabits per second on the WAN side coming in from the ISP. And of course, we need something that can handle two gigabits, which is why we're jumping up to the pro version here. Uh, still though, it's very reasonably priced. It's well under 400 bucks most of the time, and it will deliver the performance that we need and allow us to uplink to other switches in the network that are running at 10 gigabits. And we'll get into uh, the port configuration on here in a minute. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Unify did send this router to the channel free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And I should also add that I have Unify access points that I did purchase with my own funds and have been very happy with here on the network. We did a review of those a few years back. Let's take a closer look real quick though at the hardware before we get everything installed. Uh, the good news is, is that even though this is a faster piece of hardware, it will work with my existing configuration until that fiber optic line shows up. Uh, so what you got here is an eight port gigabit switch. Uh, this is a layer two switch, I believe, so we can configure VLANs and a whole bunch of other stuff on each of these ports, basically a smart switch. Uh, next to it, we have the gigabit WAN port here. And you're gonna say, well, Lon, you need two gigabits, don't you? And yes, I do. And the reason we went with the Pro here is that it has some SFP slots here for faster connections. So what we're gonna do is plug uh, the Comcast connection when it gets here into this 10 gigabit WAN adapter. And that'll give us plenty of bandwidth to handle the two gigs coming in. And then what we're going to do, and we'll do this today, is interconnect this router uh, with my faster switches with a LAN side 10 gigabit SFP. 
and that should allow us to get the fast devices talking with the slower ones. Additionally, this has a hard drive slot on it because this will double as a DVR for the Unify camera system that they offer for security, surveillance, and whatnot. So that'll be kind of a fun thing to play with a little bit down the road. And they also have a little display on here too so we can monitor uh, network activity without having to load up its control panel. On the back, there's not much to look at here. It's got a built-in power supply. There's also a, another redundant power supply we could hook up, which is uh, their USP uh, standard there in the back. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to go with the standard plug plugged in to my UPS. Now, Comcast will offer me a router as part of this deal, but I really do prefer the Unify stuff. So we're going to say thanks, but no thanks to that. We'll just be running this one on the rack. So what I'm going to do now is get this thing on my rack and boot it up. We're going to export our settings from the existing Dream Machine router into this one. It should be a pretty seamless experience. Wish me luck and hopefully soon this one will be up on the network and then we'll do some interconnections. Now I should let you know at the time I'm recording this video that my internet is down from Comcast because we had a tropical storm roll through the area knocked out power everywhere except where I live for some reason, but unfortunately Comcast is down due to that power outage, so we won't be able to make sure this thing is on the WAN in this video, but I will let you know in the comments when it does come back up. I think it'll work just fine once it's configured. All right, so we've got it powered on, and the first thing it asked me to do was connect to my network with the WAN cable. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned, my internet is down, and as you can see here on screen, it is saying no internet is detected. Uh, the cool thing, though, is that this is a touch display, so I'm guessing we'll have some additional things that we can do with it. Now, it is pointing me at their mobile app to configure things, so we're going to try that first and see if we're able to configure the router here without an outgoing internet connection. Wish me luck. So it turns out you do, in fact, need an internet connection to get this thing configured. I was about to give up, but then I realized I can tether my phone to a computer and then bridge it over the Ethernet. I'll do a whole video about that later. So we're going to give that a shot now. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just load up the app on my phone. And as you can see here, it again found my UDM Pro. We're going to click on Setup. And what I've done is I have bridged a connection in my equipment room here. And I'm just going to plug this into the WAN port on the UDM Pro here and hope that that will be enough to get everything up and running here. So I just plugged it in and let's see if it can get connected. This is probably not going to work given how lousy my connection is at the moment, but it looks like it got on the internet at least. And I'm gonna go step through the process now of setting this up. So we'll just keep plowing through this here. And once this process is done, uh, what we'll do next here is export the settings from the existing Dream Machine and import them into this one. And hopefully it'll just be an in-place kind of upgrade where we won't have to do much else. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're on my Dream Machine's control panel right now. And as you can see, everything is good, even though my internet is down at the moment. And what I'm gonna do here is go down to the settings gear icon. And then what I'm going to do is scroll down to the bottom where we've got controller settings. And I'm going to go to backup. And here I'm going to have it download the backup from the last seven days. That'll give us not only the configuration, but also some of the logs from the last week, just so I can kind of pick up from where I last left off. We're going to let that file configure itself and download. And then we're going to connect to the new router and upload it to that. And hopefully everything will be right where I want it to be. And then we can move forward. All right, so we're now on the UDM Pros control panel. It looks just like the other one. Uh, what we want to do, though, is restore the settings from the other device so that we can replace that one with this one. Uh, so I'm going to go down to the gear icon here. We're going to go into the exact same place that we were before on the other one, the backup section. And what I'm going to do here is just restore from backup. And I'm going to choose the file that we downloaded just a second ago. Hopefully this is going to work. I'm going to click open and send that file up. It's going to ask me if I'm sure I want to do that. And I am sure, and we're going to do it. And now the controller is going to restart itself inside of the device here. And hopefully when this is done, I can just swap out one thing for the other and we'll be right back up and running. Let's let this finish up and we'll see what happens when it finishes. So we are now in my equipment room. And as you can see, the UDM Pro here with its awesome little display, 
uh, tells me that it has configured itself to the same network address as my dream machine. Now, right now, nothing is connected. I've disconnected everything. And we're going to start disconnecting things from the existing dream machine and plug them into the new router here. Now, pardon my mess of wires. Cable management is on the docket. I just move cables around so often that they very quickly kind of fall out of organization. Uh, but what we're going to do first here is grab this cable. This is the cable coming out of my right now dormant cable modem. You can see it just blinking there with no connection. But what I'm going to do in the interim here is plug it into the WAN port on the Dream Machine. We'll see that light up. It's not going to get an IP address because we have no internet, but at least we'll get it connected properly. Now, these other cables here will connect to other things. So this blue one uh, is connecting right now to my 48 port switch here I've got on the rack. And I'm just going to pop this one into one of the existing LAN ports there. And that's going to bridge my network to the router. So right now, all of my internet traffic comes through this cable into the router as it does now. And then I've got another cable here that is bringing in the connection from one of my computers, namely the uh, vMix system that I'm currently streaming from. So I need to get a longer cable here to reach down to where the Dream Machine is. I'm going to connect that up and then we'll jump back onto the desk and see if everything is working properly. All right, so now we have the new UDM Pro up and running on the network with that configuration restored. The original Dream Machine is unplugged now and I think we're in good shape. You can see that it sees three access points on the network. I'm just going to click into this to make sure my three have been adopted successfully, and it appears as though those are now part of the controller that's built into this, which is great. Now, before, you might have seen that we had four access points listed, and that's because the original Dream Machine I was using had an access point built in. The UDM Pro does not have a wireless access point built into it, so we're back down to three, but that's all I was using before, so I really haven't lost much here, so that's good. I'm just gonna go back a notch here and check out some of the other stuff that we can look at. Uh, here now we've got our switch, which should have more ports than we had a little bit earlier. So the original Dream Machine we were using had only four ports. It was a smart switch, but it was just four. Uh, this new one now has a few more. We've got the eight gigabit ports, and then we can also uh, add in that SFP port, which we'll get to in a few minutes. And you can see right now that I've only got two of those LAN ports occupied, but we are going to get that SFP going in a second to connect up to my 10 gigabit router so, or switch. Uh, so all good here so far. Uh, what I want to do next, though, is check and see if all of my routing rules are intact still. So let's take a look in the configuration for that. So a couple of weeks ago, we did a video about creating VLANs on Unify hardware and isolating those VLANs from each other. The firewall rules that I set up during that video are intact here. And I also looked at the networks that we set up in that video. And as you can see, those networks exist as well, including their VLAN tags. So I think uh, this configuration carried over really smoothly from the original device. Not much to do here. We just need to wait for my internet connection to come back up. But we're not done because I do want to bridge in the high-speed network switch with that SFP connection. Let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So there's a lot of different ways you can make these SFP connections. What they are are basically little cards that sit inside of the connector. So what you can use are uh, copper connections like we're going to do here that are directly attached to each other. Uh, you could also get a SFP to fiber adapter, which would run fiber optic between two points. And they also have SFP adapters that allow you to plug in just RJ45 uh, Ethernet jacks as well. But I figured, hey, if we're going to go a short distance, why not just get the cable all inclusive? And that's what we did here. This is about 20 bucks, not that expensive, and can support the 10 gigabit speed. Uh, so what I want to do now is connect one end to the new UDM Pro and the other end to my 10 gig switch, and let's see if it can make the connection. Okay, so let's plug these in. Now, I've never actually connected up these SFP connectors before, so hopefully I'm going to do it correctly. That feels like it's in there. And now we're going to do the same here on the other one and just push that in until it connects. Now, what I should see here is these two lights lighting up green, which indicates that we are getting a 10 gig connection 
between the two. So we've got one end in here, we've got the other end in there, and it looks as though we've got some communication going on here. Uh, now what we're gonna do is go back to the control panel and see if it's showing up correctly. So we are now back on the UDM Pro's control panel, and if we go over to the switch option and take a look at the ports, we'll see that that port we just connected, port 11, is communicating with the switch that we connected to it at 10,000 FDX. That is essentially 10 gigabits per second full duplex, meaning that it can send 10 gigabits out and get 10 gigabits back at the same time. And if we look next to it, that is the connection to the cable modem. That's running at 1,000 uh, FDX, meaning gigabit full duplex. Now, of course, my current cable connection doesn't go up that high, but that's the speed of the connection over the network to that cable modem. And then if we look over here, you can see our other LAN connections. We've got that port three, which is connecting up to my vMix workstation. That's running at a full gigabit. And then the connection to the main switch in the house here is also running at a full gigabit. So all is good. Now, when the Comcast hardware arrives, we're going to plug their network connection into port 10 here with another SFP connector and we'll disconnect the ethernet connection going to the existing cable modem, but that's still a ways off. Now, the next stage of this project is getting multi-gigabit connections to work in a few key places around the house and studio. So I've got a couple computers down here that I want to connect up to that two gigabit speed, and I've got a secondary office upstairs that I use in the evenings to get some work done that I would also like to have at the maximum speed. Now, the problem before has been that multi-gigabit switches are very expensive. That 10-gig switch cost me quite a bit in the closet over there. But QNAP, the makers of network-attached storage devices, are coming out with a low-cost 2.5-gigabit switch that should be exactly what I need for the room upstairs and, again, a few spots down here in the basement as well. And I'm doing that because I only have Cat5e wiring running through the house right now. So I'd like to avoid having to install any new cabling if possible. So we'll put it all to the test when that gear arrives. Netgear is advertising that Cat5e is fine for 2.5 gig connections. And again, we'll find out for sure when we are able to start testing everything here on the channel. And I will bring you along for that experience when all the gear shows up. So lots more to see on this. I'd love to get your comments and suggestions down below because you've already been a big help in crowdsourcing some of the different components to this. We did discuss this topic on a weekly wrap up a few weeks ago and that was a great starting point. So take a look at that video. You can get more details as to the connection we're getting and what it entails. And I'll be back soon with part two once those two and a half gig switches arrive and we can get those attached and hooked up to different parts of the house. Lots more to see here. Stay tuned. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.